After my interview with Nelson Pass, he was nice enough to send me a, one of his Amp Camp Amp Minis to test out. Well, I did a little bit more than test it, so let's see what five watts of Nelson Pass power can get us. Before we get into the ACA Mini, which I'm more than excited to talk about with all of you, I encourage you after the show to visit my description below and explore my audio inspired online clothing shop, my new music on Bandcamp, and familiarize yourselves with my other content across all the social media platforms. I'm Mike and I'm your hi-fi journalist and of course, Four-Eyed Raven. Interviewing Nelson was an absolute pleasure. Guys, I, I learned so much about amplifiers from him. It's like one of those folks that you wanna keep talking to because you have this epiphany about audio after almost every sentence spoken. I'm really amped, no pun intended, to learn about how the topology of amplification works and felt that this little project was the best way to accomplish that task at least a, a beginner's guide. I received a pre-built ACA Mini and a little project I must put together for soldering practice. However, I will leave that one for the imagination until I set aside a little more time to take on that task. I'm lucky to have a friend like Mike Galusha since he is a, just a jack of all trades and has been instrumental in developing my knowledge base of the inner workings of amps and speakers. He is a real one. And he has a YouTube channel that I would like you guys to go subscribe to. The link is down in the description below. So Mike was actually the reason I reached out to Nelson in the first place since I was just blown to complete bits after listening to Nelson's first Watt SIT 3 amplifier. Class A, of course, and only providing Mike speakers with like 9 watts of power, I was literally jaw dropped. Amazed not only by the sound quality, but at the fact that you can turn it up quite a bit and there wasn't a hint of noise or distortion. So I told myself, this Nelson fellow must be some kind of wizard or audio god to create such a beautiful sounding amp at such low wattage. When my care package arrived from Nelson, the first person I reached out to was in fact Mike, and I told him we had a project ahead of us. The fact that it was already assembled was incredible. I know, I know guys, I'm gonna get a lot of backlash for that one because I didn't build it myself. But in my defense, I am not at the point yet to put together something like that. I assure you I will be soon. I need more time, more practice with the soldering and the soldering iron, so cut me some slack. The unassembled kit is available on DIYAudioStore.com for only 125 bucks. $125, guys, for an amp that will perform beyond any expectation bias you may have had at this point. I will also include a link to the papers on how to build it down below. So, now most of you who, you know, know what they're doing with a soldering iron have completed these kits in a matter of a few hours or less. Good for you. It would have probably taken me at least six to seven business days. Because I saved myself those days and hours, I thought why not put that time and effort into building this amp a proper open air platform. So I bought a piece of really nice wood and stained it with a beautiful Bombay mahogany. I purchased little feet and binding posts on Parts Express and brought all of it over to Mike's house because I wanted to put it all together there with him because he knows what he's doing, I don't. He suggested that we had two pieces of black alloy to house the binding posts and we got to work. We machined these little aluminum pieces to fit the binding posts comfortably and gave them a nice look. We soldered all the wires together. Yes, I actually touched a soldering iron and soldered too. So after we screwed in the feet and mounted the standoffs, we ran over to his listening room, plugged in the provided 24 volt power supply, and connected Mike's massive custom speakers to the unit. 
the speakers are around 97 decibels of sensitivity. So we were both confident that, you know, the amp would be able to drive the speakers comfortably and, you know, excited. <laughs> Boy, did they ever drive those speakers. We played so many songs at different volume levels. However, something went completely wrong when we got to a song called Symphony Fantastique, which had these parts of the music that were just incredibly loud and powerful. We started hearing a buzzing coming from the speakers. Ooh, we both looked at one another and said, like, did we kill it? I mean, we challenged this amplifier more than we probably should have. However, after investigating, it seems we killed the switching power supply instead that Nelson had provided with the kit. So we found a linear power supply to hook it up to Mike's, uh, you know, setup in it from his workshop and holy shit, it made that amp sound even better. I mean, we thought, you know, solid amp with that inexpensive power supply. Cool. However, once we hooked up this linear power supply, he typically uses for measurements, things opened up so much more. The sound stage was just fantastic, and the sound was just incredibly cleaner and more pleasing to listen to. Mind you, it was just phenomenal before all this. However, having nice clean power matters. So since I broke the power supply, I reached out to my friends over at IFI, who sent me this beautiful power supply, the iPower Elite, built to provide clean, beautiful sound. This brings me to a word from our sponsors. Yes, friends, we finally got a sponsor for the video. iFi has been supporting my efforts for over two years now. We started out with the iFi Zen deck and moved on from there. I have to admit, I have nothing but great things to say about their products. Their DACs sound incredible. The headphone amps offer just dynamic sound for your favorite cans, and their iFi Zen stream could very well be your end all streamer. They pride themselves in providing a clean signal to and through all of your components. This is why I use IFI power supplies and adapters to power all of my smaller components. I can't wait to test out some of their higher end offerings because I know it will be a game changer. If I trust them with electricity, you should too. It's the most important factor in your signal chain and if it's dirty, then the sound coming from your speakers will be dirty too. You don't want to be dirty. Check the description below for a link to their catalog of products. Back to the show. So what is it about this little amp that makes it sound so good that two audiophiles with completely different hearing, musical tastes, and hi-fi setups found this unit to be so endearing? Well, it plays the music. No coloration, just pure and beautiful music. This proves it's not about using the most expensive components, just proper engineering. With the right design, you can use lesser expensive parts and get better results than with an improperly or not as well designed piece of gear with the most costly of components. This is something that the late Ken Ishiwata consistently campaigned for. Keep it simple. Nelson Pass, often referred to as Papa in the DIY audio forums, which is awesome, did just that. He designed a unique and genuine Class A amp using parts that you could easily source from Mauser or DigiKey and created something that, yes, can punch well above its price point. And the best part is that it's simple enough to build for a hobbyist with enough interest. You don't need a degree in electrical engineering to put it together successfully. This experience completely blew my mind right off. So after playtime at Mike's, I brought the little gem home and waited patiently for the new power supply to come in from iFi. I was dying to try this amp. Uh, I wanted to try it on the Tekton 210 Perfect Set. So I needed a preamp to control the volume and tones, of course. So I dusted off my old FX Audio Tube 03, guys. This little guy was my go-to when I first started my channel. And to be completely honest, it still sounds fantastic. However, it, I felt it needed to be upgraded just a bit. 
It had the Musa Zero Two op amps already installed from a video long ago, but Andrew over at Sparkos Lab sent over a few of his SS3602 dual op amps for me to take for a spin. So I installed them earlier today. The op amps will get their own video here soon. However, I wanted to touch the subject a bit here. I understand some of you don't believe in op amp rolling and that's totally cool. I respect that and I respect you. However, for me, it has shown significant signs of improvement when rolled from those, you know, throwaway chi-fi ones that come with these inexpensive units. So how did it all sound, guys? Well, I hooked everything up using my new iFi iPower Elite and it all turned on, so that was a win. <laughs> Guys, it sounded incredible. The ACA Mini drove the Tectons with ease. It was a pleasure to listen to it. The bass was way more present. Actually, Tecton is pretty lucky I did this because the amp I was just using, the bass just wasn't there. Here I thought these speakers with two 10 inch drivers couldn't cut the mustard in the bass department. You know, I hook up an amp with a fraction of the power and a $40 preamp. The power supply costs almost double the amp and the preamp, for God's sakes. And it just blows my socks right off. I mean, I'm barefoot right now. The clarity was so beautiful, guys. Gorgeous. Just, ooh. The soundstage was nice. The overall, the bass, the mids, the treble across the frequency stream was very present and played with almost godlike authority. Yes. Godlike authority. That's my new saying now. If you hear it anywhere else, call them out because they stole it from me. So, overall, guys, with an amp kit that costs $125 altogether and an upgraded version of the FX Audio Tube 03 paired with a couple of quality power supplies from IFI, then you got yourself a serious system. Now, will this amp drive more inefficient speakers? I don't know. And I'm not sure if I want to push it that hard. I mean, it's only five watts, right? You can't ask it to do things it wasn't meant to do. However, the Tecton 210 Perfect Sets was able to get bother your neighbors loud, and I didn't hear a hint of distortion. Folks, I think if you have the skill set to solder things together, this is a project that will, you know, it's not only affordable, but will yield amazing results. Thank you all for joining me today. I enjoyed our conversation and hope you can join me for more. If you had fun, I would love for you to provide the like button with your fiercest Stone Cold Stunner, subscribe to my channel, and ring the bell to be notified when a new video emerges. Thanks again, guys. I'll be seeing you soon. Take care.